evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining in with us on tonight. We ask that you click that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends so they can join in with us as well. Our scripture tonight comes from Psalm 27, 1 through 4. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stomp and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Our song tonight is One More Time. One more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to sing together one more time, one more time, one more time. One more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to pray together. One more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to pray together. One more time. Shout one more time, one more time. He allowed us to shout together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to shout together one more. God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance, giving us another opportunity, giving us, Father God, another privilege to call upon your name. We thank you, Father, that you blessed us, you've kept us. Lord, you've kept us in the reins of our minds. Lord, you've kept us realizing that we couldn't keep ourselves. And for that, Lord, we're thankful. Thank we thank you, Lord, for just being good, for being God, for watching over us, Father God, for bringing us to this Hollywood place one more time. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together one more time. 
We thank you for sparing our lives one more time, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for just being who you are and for the way you do things, Father. Now, Lord, we pray that you bless us through your word tonight. We know, Father God, that your word gives us power. Your word gives us joy. Your word gives us influence, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you bless us through your word. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. For, Lord, we know that we messed up. We've fallen short. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for sinning. We thank you for the means by which you've given us to be forgiven, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you now, Lord. We ask you to continue to walk with us. Meet us, Father God, in your word. Bless us by way of your word, that your word will become real to us as we hear your word. It's in the precious, mighty, strong, powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. One more time. God has. He's allowed us to come together. Just one more time. If he doesn't do it again, he's allowed us one more time. One more time. He has come together. One more time. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for another privilege, another honor, another chance to come together just one more time. Thank you so much for joining us by way of Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Thank you for being a part of our service on tonight. This is our, this is our midweek service, our Bible study. So we're in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, and we'll be focusing on two verses here tonight. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 20 is where we are tonight. <clears throat> and we thank you. Those of you who are visiting with us, thank you. Those of you who are members of the New Beginning Church, thank you so much for being a part of our worship service here tonight. This is our midweek service. This is the time where we get together during the middle of the week and we talk about the Word of God. Because it, the word fuels us up and helps us to get through the week. It would be tragic if we didn't have a midweek service where we got together and where we, we lift up the name of Jesus and where we did not get fuel. We need fuel. And especially in times like these, we need to hear, believe, and trust in the word of God. So we're in Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 20 is where we are tonight. On last week, we talked about the fact that, that Jesus Christ is God's son. Jesus Christ being his son, he was the firstborn from the dead. Jesus Christ is the preeminent one. He is the preeminent one. Jesus Christ is the preeminent one, meaning that he's first in rank. He's first in influence. He is eternal. He's everlasting. Jesus is holding first place. If I don't ask you any other question tonight, I just want to know from you, is Jesus holding first place in your life? Is Jesus the Christ holding first place in your life? He is the preeminent one. He existed before we got here. Even though Jesus got off as a baby in Bethlehem of Judea, he existed before we got here. He existed before Mary and Joseph arrived on the scene. Mm -hmm. Jesus is God. Jesus existed as God has existed even in eternity past. He will exist in eternity future as well. He is the only person that has ever come to planet earth that is just as old as his father and older than his dad and than his mother. He's just as old as his father, but he is older than his mother. Jesus Christ, the self-existing Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the God that is with us was the same God, the same Lord Jesus Christ that was with God in the beginning, before the beginning as we knew it begun. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verses number 19 and 20 is where we are tonight, and we'll get a good snapshot of what Jesus really is and who Jesus really is. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. When you're found it, you'll discover these words. For it pleased the Father that in him, him, for it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus is the him, 
For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Verse 20, and by him, him is Jesus, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. We look at these, these verses, and it is a continuation of the rest of the pericope that is found in previous verses. We understand that Jesus Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus the Christ is the only image on planet Earth he is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus is. You know, we walk as Christians, we live as Christians, we act like Christ, and we ought to carry ourselves like Christ. But at the end of the day, we must understand that Jesus the Christ is the visible image of the inv invisible God. That's found in verse number 15. It says, and he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Jesus being born of a woman. He was already born before he got here. Mm -hmm. Jesus existed in the beginning. When we hear God talking and God says, let us make man, it is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the triune God talking to each other. He says that he's the visible image of, of the invisible God, and regardless of what you exist, whether you're in heaven or on earth, he has dominion. Yes, sir. He has principalities, and he has power. There is nothing that has been created other than those things that were created by Jesus Christ. So he was there in the creation. When creator, Father God, created all that we see, Jesus was present in the creation. Mm -hmm. Goes on to say that all things that were created were created through him and for him. It was given his purpose. The purpose of all the creation was to glorify God. Mm -hmm. It was created for Jesus Christ, yes, for the sake of God himself. Verse 17 says, and he is before all things and in him all things consist. There's nothing that consists other than those things that consist through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reason why all things exist and all things consist. Verse 18 says, and he is the head of the body, the church. Pastors are not head of the church. I know pastors would like, love to say that they are the head of the church. The fact of the matter is, my brothers, the pastor is never the head of the church. So we are in error when we talk about the fact that, that men are pastors because the bride of Christ is the church and that no woman could lead the church because there must be a man who's leading the bride. Your theology may be correct, but your reason is wrong. Let me explain. Let me unpack that. The fact of the matter is that the preacher, whether male or female, the pastor, whether male or female, the leader, the shepherd of the church is never the head of the church. Jesus and Jesus alone is the head of the church. No one, no person, no gender can overstep his or her bounds, because Jesus Christ is the head of the body. The body is the church. Amen. What I'm saying to you today is you cannot justify any pastor being the, the head of the church. We are leaders. We are under shepherds, under God's anointing, under God's authority, but Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Yes. Back home in Mississippi, when they got ready to, to baptize you, they would say, I, I baptize you in the name of the great head of the church, Jesus Christ himself. 
in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have to make sure we understand theologically, spiritually, and just scripturally, Jesus Christ is the head of the body. He is the head of the church who is in the beginning. He was in the beginning. He is, he has preeminence. He has first place. The question is, does Jesus have first place in your life? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a statement that even people who are not Christians, they, they talk about giving honor to God, the, the head of my life. Now, you just got through with your rap music, and you just got through cursing throughout the rap music. It seems like to me, if he's the head of your life, then your life ought to be governed by him. So Jesus is the head of the church. Yes, sir. Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. And the church are those of us who have given our lives, have given our focus, who have given our attention to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because we've given our attention to Jesus the Christ, we understand really well that the pastor is not the head of the church, but Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And so the church is the bride of Christ. Those who trust the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, then and only then are we a part of the church. You see, you don't join the church. You're born into the church. Amen. You have to be. You got to be born again. And this new birth experience is not running, jumping, shouting, or crying out with other utterances. It's not the speaking of the tongue. It is the new birth experience that takes place when one trusts that Jesus is the head of the church. He's the son of God that gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. Right. And he did it on a tree. And verse number 20 will tell us he did it on a cross. Let's look at verse number 19. First, uh, we're looking at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 19 and verse number 20. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Now, when we talk about him, we're talking about Jesus. When we talk about him, we're talking about Jesus. And verse number 19 says, it pleased the Father. This word pleased means that God had great pleasure. God was willing. And God had approval of Jesus the Christ. The angels couldn't save us. Mm -hmm. The angels cannot be the head of the church. Yes. Moses and David and Abraham did not qualify to be the head of the church. Only Jesus qualified. The Bible said it pleased. Verse number 19 said... For it pleased, it was approved by God. It was approved, this word pleased mean approved by the Father God, the creator, God, Jesus' Father, God himself approved that in Jesus and him, the verse says, in him all the fullness should dwell. In him, in who? In Jesus, Jesus the Christ, the fullness of God dwells in him. The fullness dwell. The fullness, all the fullness should dwell. It pleased God so much that all, all, this word all is everything. This word all is the wholesome, the, the all, the whole, the whole of the deal. This word all means everything and everybody. In other words, in Jesus the Christ, the whole of God dwells. Mm -hmm. This word for, see, he, he talks about all, and then it's, it's kind of like he gives you a double dose of it because after he says all, he says fullness. Mm -hmm. So he says all, everything, all, the whole part, all, the wholesome, all, then he says, the fullness. This word fullness is fulfillment. 
This word fullness is fulfilling. This word fullness is completion. The fullness of God, the completion of God, the fulfillment of God, the fulfilling of God. In other words, the fulfillment of God resides in Jesus Christ. Fullness means the accomplishment, <laughs> the sum total. So what he's saying here is God was pleased to allow the sum total of himself to dwell the fulfillment, to dwell the completion, to dwell in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This word all fulfill, fulfill, fulfillness, this word all fullness means the whole total sum of God's divine power and God's total attributes dwell in Jesus Christ. Oh, that's good news tonight. The, the visible image of the invisible God, Jesus Christ, it pleased the almighty God that Jesus Christ would carry out the fullness of God and it would be complete in him. What's complete in him? The sum total of his divine power and attributes. Mm -hmm. In other words, through Jesus Christ, every attribute that you would see, experience in God, you will see and experience it through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus says, I got to leave you now. And when I come, when I leave, the Holy Spirit will come. And when he comes, that's why we have to understand the Holy Spirit is and he the Holy Spirit, he will come and he will, he will do the same things and say the same thing. And he will, he will also say to you the same things I've said to you. He will confirm what I've already said. Amen. The Holy Spirit who's walking with us, talking with us, who resides in us today, he has come. Jesus left the scene. The Holy Spirit is on the scene and the Holy Spirit will never contradict what God the Father and God the Son has already said. Yes. God deliver me from men, women, boys, and girls who have come to the conclusion that this Holy Spirit that we worship, this Holy Spirit who's now on the scene will tell us to do something that God the Father and God the Son, as well as God's word, has not told us. Mm -hmm. there's, no contra there's no contradiction in the triune God. Yes, Matter of fact, the triune God never overstepped their personage. They never, you see, the, the God the Father never interfered with Jesus. Yes, God the, the Holy Spirit never interfered with God the Father. When he said, let us make man, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit came together and they made man. Therefore, we understand today that in Jesus Christ, there's all fullness of God, the sum total of God, of God's divine power and God's divine attributes are found in Jesus Christ. That's verse number 19. Colossians verse number 19 says, it, it pleased, for it pleased the Father. It pleased Jesus' Father. It pleased our Heavenly Father. In other words, it was approved by God that all things, everything, the whole of it, the fullness, the sum total of the divine power and attributes of God would dwell in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This word dwell means to take up residence, mm -hmm. <laughs> means to reside in. It means to, to have a house permanently to have a permanent house, Jesus Christ, the fullness of God, Jesus Christ, the son of God, he has, he has the whole summation of every divine power and attribute of God dwelling in him so much so until it's a permanent house, Amen. a permanent residence. It is an inhabitant that remains and occupied in Jesus Christ. It is the fullness of the Godhead found in Jesus. Yes, 
Jesus Christ. That's why we can't depend on Muhammad. We can't depend on Buddha. We can't depend on Aristotle or Confucius. We have to depend on Jesus. Amen. And let me tell you, scientists need to depend on Jesus. The legislature needs to depend on Jesus. The executive branches need to depend on Jesus. The Congress need to depend on Jesus. The president needs to depend on Jesus. Because if we're going to see God, the invisible God, we have to look to Jesus to see him. Because the fullness of the Godhead, the summation, the total attributes, every divine power, every attribute of God is seen in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says right here in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 19, that God approves of it. God is pleased. Verse number 20. And by him, who is him, Jesus Christ, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. This word him is Jesus. Himself is talking about God. In other words, man and God has been in a strained relationship. Man and God are on two different spectrums without Jesus. Man couldn't get to God. God couldn't get to man. There was a great gulf between the two. We couldn't shake the hand of God. God wouldn't shake the hand of us because sin was in between us. Mm -hmm. We were born in sin. We were shaped in sin. We were made in iniquity because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden. And therefore, because God has nothing to do with sin, we needed a bridge that would bridge us over to God. Jesus Christ is that bridge. Mm -hmm. Because he, he is just as much God as man, as God, and just as much man as man. He's just as much God as God, just as much man as man. He can reach God and he can reach man and bring a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Jesus, death on the cross, bridged the gap between God and man. That's why, that's why we cannot reject Jesus if we're trying to get to God. If we're going to get to God, we got to go through Jesus. Verse number 20, Colossians chapter 1. And by him, by Jesus, to reconcile all things to himself. Jesus, please God. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's God giving his, his approval to Jesus Christ. And as God gives his approval to Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ is the only one who can reconcile us to God. Amen. This word reconcile means to change. The word reconcile means to exchange. So it means to change and it means to exchange. What is it changing and what is this exchanging? It is changing our relationship when it comes to God. Jesus Christ reconcile us. It changed, he changed us. And not only did he change us as individuals, he also changed our relationship and he exchanged our sin with his blood. Let's look at what it says. God, Jesus has reconciled us back to himself, back to God. He has changed us, he has exchanged us. And what did he exchange? He exchanged our enmity meaning we were enemies to, with God. He has exchanged our enmity with friendship. God himself allowed Jesus Christ to down the cross to reconcile man back to himself. He exchanged, he exchanged our enmity. We were enemies with God. Some of us today, when we fall in our sins, we are enemies to God. The man who has never received Jesus Christ as their personal savior, that man is an enemy to God. But I want to tell you tonight, Jesus Christ is here to reconcile you back to God. And I'm not talking about your sins that you do. I'm talking about the sin nature. 
I had to tell a sister the other day, sister, it's not because you never been in the street that God has saved you. It's not because of the sins that you have not done that you're so good. It's only because of what Jesus has done for you. It's not because of what we do. It's, for, it's because of what he has done on a cross over 2,000 years ago. And it's because of what Jesus has done that makes us available and make the pathway available to get to God. We can, we're not that smart. We're, we're not that holy. We're, we're not that committed to God where we can just walk up before God on our own because we are sinful. We have a sin nature. And our sin nature loves to sin. Our sin nature just loves sin. I, I, it doesn't matter if you've ever been on drugs. It doesn't matter if you never parted. It doesn't matter if you never prostituted. It doesn't matter if you never gotten drunk. What matters is Jesus did it for you on Calvary. Yes, he, he paid the price for you. He reconciled us back to God. He made it possible for us to get to God. He took our enmity. And he, he, he made it friendship. When Jesus died on Calvary, it was God exercising his grace toward sin for man through the death of Jesus Christ. God exercised his grace. He, he presented his grace. Romans says to us that while we were yet in our sin, Christ died for us. Amen. While sin nature was running rampant, Christ, Jesus Christ, died for us. Jesus has become our perpetuation. He has become the ultimate sacrifice mm -hmm. under the judgment due to our sins. Jesus, who knew no sin. Jesus, who never sinned. Jesus, who did not have a sin nature. He became sin on our behalf. It's like we go to court, and when you go to court, you know you're guilty when you show up. Matter of fact, your lawyer knows you're guilty. Your defense attorney knows you're guilty. Your advocate knows that you're guilty. You go to court, and you're guilty. Your mama knows you're guilty. They're just going around supporting you, but they know you're guilty as sin. You go to court, your defense attorney stands before the judge and pleads your case, and the prosecutor is standing there, and he's saying, but judge, there's evidence that he's guilty. Judge, we know he's guilty. He says to the jury, we know he's guilty, and the jury knows he's guilty. But Jesus is my defense attorney. Jesus is my advocate. Jesus goes up and takes my place, says, Lord, I know. It says, Your, Your Honor, I know he's guilty, but I'm willing to take his place. Don't let him die because of his sin. Don't let him be sentenced because of his sin. Don't send him to hell because of his sin or his sin nature. I will take the punishment for him. And that's what Jesus did. He took our punishment. He became God's satisfaction. The word perpetuation means God was satisfied with Jesus. Jesus reconciled us back to God. He saved us. He redeemed us. He brought us back with his precious blood. Verse number 20, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, says, And by him, by Jesus, to reconcile all things to himself. To reconcile man back to God, all things to himself, by him. By who? By Jesus. Whether things on earth or things in heaven. Things, things are going bad with mankind. Things, things are still bad and things are getting worse with mankind. But Jesus, Jesus is able to reconcile us back to God and, and set matters straight back to God. Set matters straight where we can get to God. It says whether on earth or things in heaven. Having made peace through the blood 
of his cross. Jesus Christ made peace with God. I told you we were enemies. But Jesus reaches up and catches the holy hand of God. Reaches down and catches the unholy hand of man. And brings a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Jesus bridges the gap between us and God. Having made peace, meaning that Jesus has become the peacemaker. Jesus has become the one who brings harmony. Jesus harmonizes for us. He harmonizes us to a point where, where there's a wholesome relationship. He brings harmony in the room. Where there's chaos, Jesus brings harmony in the room. Jesus, having made peace, meaning that he's the peacemaker. Jesus being a man, Jesus being God, it brings about peace to mankind. He's the peacemaker. There's no greater peacemaker than Jesus the Christ. There's no greater peace that could be situated like Jesus has brought it forth. Yes. Jesus has brought peace. And he did it by his blood. He did it. Look at the text. The, he did it. The Bible says, having made peace through the blood of his cross. I told you that God, God, God himself was at an enmity with man. He was at, at odds with man. man. Man was God's enemy. But Jesus Christ brings this happy, this, this terrible dispute to a happy ending. Jesus bridges the gap between God and man. Let me just say to you today, my dears, he, he did it because he's the peacemaker. Yes. He brings harmony. He harmonizes us. Well, we're in harmony with God and God is in harmony with man. It's only done through Jesus. He goes on to say, through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood. This word blood is the kindred. This, bl this word blood means the blood shed. This word blood represents the atoning blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. So the blood of Jesus is the only thing that connects us with God. Jesus shed this blood on Calvary. You see, in our bloodstream runs a sin nature. So our bloodstream can't get us to God. But Jesus the Christ, the one who knows no sin, Jesus the Christ, the one who cannot sin. Jesus the Christ, the one who did not sin. He shedded his blood, and his blood is the only atoning blood that we have. It is the blood of Jesus. So when God sees the blood of Jesus, he, he, he gives us peace. It atones us. It's, it set us right. It, it makes us look right. It, it, it imputes righteousness into us. In other words, we're guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. We are sinful as charged. We are sinners as charged. But the blood of Jesus atones for our sins. The blood of Jesus makes a difference in our lives. The blood of Jesus brings a bitter dispute to a happy ending. It atones us. It set us straight. The blood of Jesus. Yes. Finally, it says in verse number 20, through the blood, and this is the blood of Jesus, of his cross. The word cross is a pole, a stick, a stake. A post. It is the symbol of Jesus' self-denial. Jesus denies himself for all of mankind. He left his place in glory. He left his spot in heaven. He left, he came down. Matthew says, in Matthew chapter 1, Matthew says that he came down through 42 generations. 14, 14, and 14. He came down through 42 generations. He got off in a little place called Bethlehem of Judea. Jesus came to a virgin called Mary. He walked these mundane shores like you and I do. He got tired because he was a man. 
but he saved us because he is God. His blood, his blood has his self-denial, the blood that he shed it on Calvary, on the cross, has set us straight. Yeah, he, he has set us straight. He, he set us straight on Calvary. You see, I told you we're guilty of sin. I told you our sin nature has messed us up and turned us away from God. Our sin nature has gotten us in a shamble. Our sin nature has gotten us in a mess. And it doesn't matter how saved you are, how long you've been saved, you still have this sin nature. And every now and then, Paul says in Romans chapter 7, this sin nature keeps popping up. It keeps gathering up in me. And every time I want to do good, every time I want to do what's right, sin keeps following me around. Yes. Paul paints this picture in, in Romans chapter 7 of how sin misuses us. Paul says, I want to do what's right. And every time I want to do what's right, sin keeps showing up. In my, in my mind, I got it right. But in my members, sin keeps messing with me. I know I'm saved. I know I'm born again. I know the Lord has washed me in his blood. And I'm going to tell you, just because you're saved, don't think that trouble ain't coming your way. Mm -hmm. The songwriter said, I'm so glad trouble doesn't last always. It's not talking to unbelievers only. It's talking to the believer. We're going to have some trouble. Matter of fact, we got trouble now. I mean, I mean, we got a pandemic on our hand and it's affecting the just as well as the unjust. It's affecting the rain is falling on the just as well as the unjust. This is the time. There is no time now for us to forsake God. There is no time now for us to turn our backs on God. This is the time that we need to call on God like never before. It is a time where the church got to be the church. It is a time where the church has to walk in faith. It is the time where the church has to obey Jesus and claim this blood that he has shed for us on Calvary. Because if we could have saved ourselves, all of us would have been saved. Yes. But Jesus Christ and his atoning blood, that he shed it on the cross, verse number 20 Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, declares that Jesus shed his blood for us on a skull hill called Calvary. He shed his blood on a cross, yes, sir. on a stick, on a stake, mm -hmm. <laughs> on a pole, on a post. Jesus the Christ shed his blood on a skull hill called Calvary on a stick. He did it for you and he did it for me. Thank you, Lord. And he did it before we were born. And he did it knowing that we would be caught in our sins. But thank God Jesus shed his blood on Calvary. And his blood set us right with God. It has been imputed. It has been, it has been declared unto us as we are righteous, as if we are right. As if we've been living right. Now, because Jesus has shed his blood, Paul says here in Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, that it pleased the almighty God mm -hmm. that everything, where, wherever we go, that we will be accountable because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He says that in Jesus, there is the fullness of God. Yes. The wholeness of God exists in Jesus. Let me tell you, you can't get around Jesus if you're going to God. Mm -hmm. you, you can't get past him if you're going to God. Yes. It, it takes Jesus to get to God. You can't get past Jesus if you're going to heaven. You cannot miss Jesus or usurp the authority of Jesus to get to God. You got to go through him. He, he, the, the Bible says the fullness of God dwells, resides in him, and it remains in him. Buddha don't have it. Mm -hmm. Confucius doesn't have it. Yes. Muhammad doesn't have it. Aristotle doesn't have it. Einstein didn't have it. Let me just share with you, the president surely doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. It's only in Jesus. Yes. We got to put our hope in Jesus. That's why the songwriter says that my hope is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I wholly hold on to Jesus' name. The songwriter declares that I was sinking deep in sin. 
I had drifted far from the peace to shore. I was deeply stained within, <laughs> seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and now safe am I, because from the waters he lifted me. Amen. Now safe am I. Let me just tell you, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ paid the price for you and paid the price for me. Amen. No more doves are needed. No more goats are needed. <laughs> no more scapegoats are needed. Jesus the Christ paid it on Calvary. Yes, on the cross, the text declares, he did it on the cross. He shed it the blood. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us whole. Amen. God imputes righteousness. It, it, God approves of Jesus. Thank God he approves of Jesus. And thank God we're able to, to reach and touch Jesus. He paid it all for us on Calvary. His atoning blood became the sacrifice that God was willing to give up. The perpetuation for our sin. It means that, that God is only satisfied with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this word perpetuation means that, that God could not get satisfaction until he sees the blood of Jesus. Jesus became the satisfaction for God. Yeah, that's right. yeah he, he is the satisfaction. He, he is the only one and only thing. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that can satisfy God, and he gave it over 2,000 years ago on a cross, on a stick, on a post, on a pole. He became the self-denying one for you and me. It's so simple because God wants you to go to heaven when you die. Yes, but the only way you can get to heaven is through Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to me today, you need to understand that the only way to get to him is through Jesus. Yes. He shed his blood for you. Mm -hmm. He made a way for you. Man was enemies with God, but Jesus the Christ brought a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to let you know you can be saved right here, Amen. right now where you are. Just trust in Jesus. Believe that his blood that was shed on Calvary can make you whole. You're not good enough to go to heaven. And you're not bad enough to go to hell. Because you're not determined. It's not determined whether you go to heaven and hell based on your goodness or your badness. It's only through Jesus. If you don't trust him, you're going to hell. But if you trust him tonight, you're on your way to heaven. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to trust Jesus Christ to be your only, your only Savior. You ought to trust him today. And you can do that by just repeating after me. I just want to lead you in this simple prayer. And it goes like this. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new person. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Thank you for saving my soul. If you can believe that story, will you join me in this simple prayer today and invite Jesus into your life? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. We believe if you prayed that prayer that you're honestly born again and when you die you're on your way to heaven. We want to thank God for you for, for meeting Jesus on tonight for getting to know him and being introduced to him. He shed his blood for you. He loves you. In spite of who you are, in spite of what you've done, Jesus loves you. And there may be somebody listening to me today that don't have a church home. 
I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the main attraction and Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus is the one that we focus on. Where Jesus is not only the main attraction, but he's the main event. Where Jesus is the center of attention. The New Beginning Church. You can join by, by just inboxing me and letting me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'd be glad to welcome you to the family of faith. And for those of you who have prayed this prayer tonight and invited Christ into your life, we want to welcome you to the family of faith. Welcome you to, to the body of Christ. Welcome you to the church. You've been born into the church tonight. Inbox me and let me know that you were born into the church tonight. You were born into this new life in Jesus Christ, believing then his death, burial, and resurrection. Paul says right here in, in Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, he says that God has placed in Jesus the fullness of himself, the totality, the sum total of his attributes, the sum total of his divine power is in Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to the body, welcome you for being a part of the church, and we'll be glad to greet you. So inbox me and let me know that you made a decision on tonight, and if you need prayer, go ahead and inbox me and let me know that that you need prayer, and we'll be praying with you and praying for you. And we'll be glad to continue to walk with you as the devil is running rapid throughout our nation and throughout our world. But he's not as powerful as the conquering king of Calvary, Jesus the Christ himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you so much for joining us. Now it is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is offering. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time to give to him. And you can do, do so by three means. First of all, you can give by way of cash app. Our cash tag is Cash tag NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. You can give by way of Cash App. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. By way of Zelle. Or you can mail in your offering. If you'd like to mail in your offering, we'll be glad to accept it by mail. You can mail it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. We we're looking forward to your offering. We're looking forward to you celebrating with us the conquering king of Calvary. Thank you for joining us tonight, Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night, we're here at 7.20 p.m. for Bible study every Wednesday night. So thank you for joining us tonight. Also, you can join us on Sunday morning by way of Zoom as well as Facebook Live at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Our youth and our young people are having Sunday school by way of Kahoot. They are challenging each other by way of Kahoot. We, uh, we want to thank them for being a part of, of those services by way of Kahoot for our, our youth and our young people. And also on Sunday morning, you can join us at 1045 every Sunday, 1045 a.m. every Sunday for our worship service. We'll be glad to, to be with you and be glad to share with you as we do every Sunday at our 1045 a.m. service. Thank you to our visitors for joining us. Thank you to our visitors for, for contributing to our ministry. Thank you. We receive uh, your blessings by mail and by Cash App and Zelle. Thank you so much for building this kingdom of the Lord. Thank you for being givers to the kingdom. And thank you for joining us. We look forward to, to ministering with you and ministering to you at 9 a.m. on Sunday. 10.45 a.m. on Sunday 
and every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Thank you so much. We are lifting and we're praying for those who are going through these tough times and let us pray one for the other. And we're looking forward to the day where we can get together to fellowship again, hug each other and be a part of this great family of faith and, and walk together and, and share our testimonies of how God has brought us over. Thank you for joining us. Co please come back and be a part of our service. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12 and verse number 32. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for Jesus the great head of the church. We thank you for Jesus, the head of the body of Christ. We thank you, Father God, for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that that in Jesus is all that is in God. We thank you that he dwells in Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus has become the satisfaction to God, the great perpetuation. We thank you for Jesus' ability to reconcile us back to God. He brought us back and he brought us back. And we thank you for it today. We thank you for the Holy Spirit as he leads, directs, and guides us. We pray that you bless these, your people, that we will be living examples, living testimonies of who Jesus is and what he's doing. It's in the precious, mighty, powerful name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.